You're listening to Tom Hartman. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. And it goes Friday. Back with more of your calls in just a moment. Stick around. And welcome back. Mark Taylor Canfield. Hey, Mark. How's Seattle? Hey, Tom. Well, it's been great weather here, but don't tell anyone. But uh, <laughs> I've been covering the police. Uh, I've been covering the killing of Manuel Ellis by police in Tacoma as a journalist. And it looks like we may have finally turned a corner in this country in terms of police accountability. Because uh, I have a piece published at Daily Coast about this, but the Washington Post has covered it, the New York Times, the Guardian. And last week, three Tacoma police officers were charged with felonies in the case of Manuel Ellis, who died in police custody while handcuffed last year. And the, our Washington State Attorney General, Bob Ferguson, a very fearless guy, filed second-degree murder charges against two of the officers and then manslaughter against the third. And, you know, although we have a long way to go, I think Washington State used to have the weakest law in the nation regarding prosecution of police. But recent legislation has made it much easier to hold cops accountable. And there are more laws on the way through the state legislature, which will address this problem. But it's good to see some movement on this front. And I believe that the Black Lives Matter movement has really changed the dialogue and resulted in a whole new effective and vital civil rights movement, especially in Seattle and Tacoma. I agree. And I've seen changes in the news coverage, too, amongst my colleagues in journalism in the way that even public officials are approaching police policy. And so it's a good start. You know, unfortunately, we can't bring the folks back who have been killed by police, but maybe we can stop the madness that's led to this situation in the U.S. And I'm hoping that the prosecution of police in Minneapolis and Tacoma will signal a new era where cops are finally held responsible for their actions instead of being given immunity from prosecution, which is a situation that's been promoted by many of the so-called police unions. Yeah. which are actually professional guilds, not labor unions. And by the way, the Seattle Police Guild has been kicked out of the Martin Luther King Jr. County Labor, labor Council here in Seattle because the other labor unions said they're not, a, they're not a labor union. They are a professional guild. What's that, professional what's, what does that distinction mean? I, I, I've, I, 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 well, didn't, I, thing, I didn't realize there was a difference. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you know, like uh, professional guilds would be like the Society for Professional Journalism that I belong to, where it's it's an organization that's there to advocate for a particular profession, but it's not there to organize unions. It's not there to organize with other unions. They did not play well, let's put it that way, mm-hmm. with other unions, and they did not set a standard that the other labor unions thought was something that would Qualified but they do negotiate, uh, you know, wages and benefits on behalf of their members. I mean, doesn't that make them unions? Well, they don't call themselves that, though. They actually call themselves the, the Seattle Police Officers, the Seattle Police Officers Association. So it's not, they don't even call themselves the labor union, but there has been at least one federal judge up here who said the, the Seattle Police um, the Guild will not hold the city on uh, hostage in future negotiations because unfortunately what they do a lot of times is try to block civil rights reforms you know because the seattle police department was under review they're under a consent decree um because of an investigation by the department of justice for racial profiling and excessive use of force so oftentimes they um try to block those kind of civil rights reforms during the contract negotiations and that is what the federal judge was really incensed about and a lot of people up here have not uh, appreciated the fact that you know they're so intransigent and also that they voice some very very right-wing anti-black lives matter uh, propaganda which is also not something the other labor unions agree with yeah and uh, and what the white supremacist movement has has uh i was going to say wormed its way into police uh, departments all across the country but really uh, our, our whole notion of policing is founded in that going back to the slave patrols mark thank you very much mark taylor canfield we'll be right back it's uh, coming up on 10 minutes before we Share the Tom Hartman program with your friends. We're available on Sirius XM, Free Speech TV, Pacifica, commercial stations nationwide, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, on the Tom Hartman app, and you can even tell your smart speaker to listen to the Tom Hartman program. In addition to the free newsletter that we have over at TomHartman.com, which gives you 
literally a link to every story or article I've talked about throughout the day, every day, comes into your email box every day. There's no charge. Uh, in addition to that, and my daily rants, which are free of advertising and free of charge over at HartmanReport.com, uh, we also produce a weekly video. This week's video is about how power companies around the country, for-profit power companies, 100% of the time, these power companies around the country are making it harder and harder and more and more expensive for people to install solar in their homes. All kinds of ways of trying to block people from doing this. And increasingly, they're getting support from Republican politicians, both at the local and the state level. It's something that we really need to know about, we need to be paying attention to, and we need to be aggressively pushing back on. You can check it out over at TomHartman.com and at HartmanReport.com.